Welcome to the Battlegrounds Tour Agency's Guide to Karakin. Now you might know Karakin from its infamous black zone and survivors using sticky bombs instead of doors, but this little island is so much more than a 2x2 two -two field of destruction. Take the Jamila Textile Operation, for example. Jamila Textiles was by far the most prominent business on the island, replacing farming after a massive drought devastated the economy. Even the octopus fishermen had their land bought out by Jamila's owner, Amir, and left for the mainland. Amir owned damn near the whole island by the time he was done, but reasonable people know that textiles weren't what was paying for. Still, more factories were built, some in obscure locations with only minimal staff even to run them. In fact, there were a couple that were built, opened, and almost immediately closed and boarded up. But more on those later. Our first stop is Al Haik, one of the more uh, quaint towns on the island. Al Haik had an important job though. The workers here were responsible for refining the core pigments set up the road to Hadika Nemo for processing into dye. We'll be heading up that way next. From what the books show, Hadika Nemo was the main port that Jamila Textiles used to import raw materials. It was also the place where all the factory's dyes were mixed, as you can see from the multicolored vats here. Now on the way to Al Habar is the first of those boarded up factories I talked about. They patched up the walls after the last battleground, but sure would be interesting to see what's going on in there. I got a feeling it wasn't making textiles. Next up is Al-Habar, one of the biggest cities on Karakin. Al-Habar was the city closest to many of the farmsteads on the island, and thus used to be a pretty big economic area. After the farmers had left and Jamila bought up their land, the city was mostly inhabited by factory workers. Speaking of Jamila, up on the hill over there is the main Jamila textile factory. Many people questioned this location for the main factory, as it was pretty far from both the main port cities and even a bit of a haul for Al Habar. But when you're trying to be discreet, it makes perfect sense. What, did I forget to mention that Amir was a smuggler? This whole island is one big smuggler's den with tunnels carved into the mountains all over the place. There supposedly ways in across the land, but you have to have the right uh, equipment to knock on the door if you know what I mean. This factory here is actually sitting on one of the major tunnels that Tenebris used to store their pilfered prizes. Speaking of Tenebris, let's head west and I'll tell you more about them. This is the port city of Barsa here. Did you notice an ominous octopus logo sprayed all over town? This was the mark of Tenebris, who were smugglers, pirates, gunrunners. <laughs> if it's shady, they probably had their tentacles in it. We know now that Amir was the head of Tenebris and used the textile business as a front giving Tenebris easy access to shipping lanes for piracy, a legitimate reason for moving cargo, and a way to launder some of those illicit earnings. If you heard about the disappearance of the SS Summerland and all the weapons it was carrying, that was them. Not a bunch you want to mess with. While their mark is pretty prominent here, the main Tenebris hideouts are said to be in the mountains. Not much to tell about our last city, Bashara, but people do need a place to live. This western town was mostly residential, with apartments and homes largely occupied by factory workers. There is one more interesting point to show you before we wrap up, though. Remember what I said about Tenebris? Well, let's just say that freight ships don't generally have a habit of beaching themselves. As for what happened to Tenebris, Amir, or the people of the island, uh, that's a little tougher to say. All we know is, whatever happened, Karakin's story ended with the battlegrounds. That's it for this tour. Friendly reminder that anything you found on the island must stay on the island. And one tourist try to smuggle a gold bar off a few trips back. Crazy what you'll find in these old places. We hope you enjoyed your experience with the Battlegrounds Tour Agency. The world's most authentic way to experience the Battlegrounds.